Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It wasn't a very great day uh, yesterday in the early hours of Monday, around 1.30 a.m. to around 3.30 a.m. Uh, because, uh, you know, so alleged criminals, you know, unknown gunmen had attacked the Imo State Police Command in Oweria as well as a correctional facility and freed, you know, thousands of, uh, of, of inmates. We've seen conflicting reports. Some are saying over 1,000, some are saying over 2,000. But the fact is that at least one 1,000 prisoners were freed from the Correctional Center and the Imo State Police Command. Uh, dozens of vehicles were burnt, and we heard reports that the police, you know, at that police station, you know, fled the scene. So this situation has created a sort of tension in, you know, Imo State, and we've seen statements from the presidency condemning this, and uh, reports saying that the IPOB, Indigenous, Indigenous People of Biafra, might have been responsible because of statements uh, uh, alluded to him uh, a, a while ago. And to discuss this, we've invited uh, Mr. Emeka Tama, he's the media advisor to the former President General of Ohaneze Indigo. Uh, good morning and thanks for joining us. Good morning. I, I want you to first um, assess the situation that occurred uh, just yesterday morning. What do you think about this, you know, situation that, you know, this attack on the prison, on the police, and the fact that IPOB, you know, seems to be taking the hits right now for that attack? Well, um, that situation should be condemnable. It should be worrisome to everybody in this country because um, when you attack a correctional facility or a prison, as it was called, the implication is that you've released some unwanted elements into the society. In other words, those who have committed one crime or the other, and there are even armed robbers, murderers, and the rest of them in such places. So it is worrisome. It should be of great concern to everybody because they have unleashed greater mayhem on the society. Now, on the issue of uh, the perpetrators of the act, uh, the allegation that it could be IPOP is still at the allegation level until otherwise proven. Um, yes, it is said that um, they all cried at night and the child died in the morning. Who doesn't know that it was all that killed the child? But still, one also says that uh, somebody is adjudged free until proven guilty. Then you now say that he's the culprit that actually carried out that act. But if you come to general insecurity in Nigeria, I must tell you that it has raised grave concern and any knowledgeable any serious-minded person in this country must feel agitated that one can no longer sleep with two eyes closed. So it is really worrisome, I must say. Right. Uh, um, the IPOB, of course, has uh, denied responsibility. The government is pointing fingers uh, towards the IPOB. Namdi Kano also was quoted um, uh, yesterday making statements with regards to um, uh, the banditry and uh, and uh, kidnappings and, of course, the way the government has treated them. Um, but you are very involved with, well, I believe you are very involved with conversations in the Southeast with regards dousing the tension and being able to control uh, the excesses of uh, the IPOB and the Eastern Security Network and, of course, with the uh, state governments and state governors around the Southeast. Can you give us a picture of what exactly is is growing or seems to be growing in the Southeast with the Eastern Security Network and the IPOB and the recent attacks on security agents uh, that, you know, come up, come up in the news every now and then? <laughs> you see, uh, my brother, I must be very frank, as a Nigerian and a patriotic one at that, you don't, anybody that says peaceful change is not possible makes violent change inevitable. It has been said before. I wish I were an advisor to any of the past or even present president 
of this country, I would have advised differently. By this, I mean that when these things were at the nascent level and could have been arrested, everybody was asking for dialogue. Call these boys and ask them what is their problem. Find out ways of discussing dialogue with them. If we can dialogue with Boko Haram and the rest of them, there's no reason we should not dialogue with people who, at that level, we are quite unarmed and almost harmless to the society. But we, uh, uh, we, we, we did, didn't agree. We refused to do that until now that it's snowballing into something violent. And we are now saying, rolling out tanks, soldiers, and all to go and quell them. This is not what should be in a country like this. The, 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 the multi-ethnic diversity of this country should tell any leader that he has to tread carefully. You don't just take anything for granted. And if anybody has any personal animosity against any group or body or area of this country, it should not be manifest in the administration of the country at large. You hold it back and then pretend as the father of all, call all your children, give them equal treatment, and there will be no trouble. But the moment you segregate and give the impression that one area is not wanted in a particular environment, it breeds dissension, it breeds violence, which is what we are witnessing now. And unfortunately, I must say, as a, a, a member of our nation, people, uh, of, uh, you know, before the, 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 the uh, administration came to an end, I knew the goings on within the IPOP. All these boys we are asking for was to be given the opportunity to be heard. But nobody gave them that opportunity. At the point, our uh, nation entered into some kind of rapport with IPOP. We told them, they came to us and we said, yes, we will accept you, you are our children. But the only thing is, we don't want you to take the violent stand. Don't be violent in whatever protestations you're making. Because we've had enough of violence in Nigeria. The Biafran experience for some of us who were born by then will tell anybody that violence is not an answer to any situation. That's dialogue. Okay. And they agree. They said, fine. Yeah, they, they will rein in their activities and. Uh, do whatever anybody wants, provided the government they protect they protect them that they are not a violent group and not a terrorist group. So why prescribe them? So this was what was our food. This was what we are trying to fight for before government rolled out tanks and vehicles under the cover of Operation This, Operation That, and. What we are now seeing is the situation has degenerated to a level where violence has become imminent. So that's the point. I hope, honestly, have an issue. Never had any sense of violence in there. All they were agitating for was self-determination. And by the way, what brought about this I mean, struggle for self-determination? Because of perceived and obvious marginalization. Because when perception becomes a reality, it becomes, it becomes very frightening. So that's what is happening now. The okay. perception they had that they are not wanted has been manifested in the lopsided appointments that have been done in this country. So many decisions that have been taken by the federal government that are not practicable to the South East. And that's what is spelling all these things. All right, Mr. Mr. Atama. IPOP said yesterday that, you know, they're a group of peace, they, you know, had no hand in the attack, and, and you're saying the same thing. But why then does it seem like IPOB is, you know, has been pointed out as a chief culprit for this attack in Imo? Well, IPOB has its operational base around uh, the southeast, obviously. And IPOB is in dissension with the federal government. And uh, uh, sometimes the utterances also 
uh, become condemnable or suspect. But all the same, until it is proven that they actually perpetrated the act, it will be wrong to consign that act to them. That's the point I'm making. I'm not defending my book in any way, but I'm just making a statement of fact. So what do you think about the president's statement, you know, describing them as terrorists? Would you say that's, that's an appropriate, you know, description of the IPOP group? Sincerely, no, sincerely, to be honest, like I said, I will talk like a Nigerian, a true Nigerian, a patriotic one. I think the, 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 the presidency was too much in a haste that declared IPOP a terrorist organization for a start. Secondly, there are the other different groups, bandits, that have been perpetrating what very terrible acts, even armed bandits, that have not been declared terrorist organizations in this country. So the question is why? Why that discrepancy? Why that uh, 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 deliberate yeah. uh, 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 singling out a particular group? All right. Ms. Atama. While other marauding groups in this country Ms. are Ms. free, sometimes when they are arrested... They Chief Atama, I want, I want to... Um, I want, because of the time that we have, I, I want, you know, your thoughts also. I was hoping that we can speak about, um, I mean, if, if IPOB says they're not uh, responsible, then who? Um, and, and does that also mean that there is, you know, you know um, criminals roaming around the Southeast, armed and dangerous, that, you know, the security agencies are not aware of? But we don't have time for that. I want you to speak on the role of Southeast governors in the last couple of years and what they may have failed to do that has led to the you know, rise and the, um, the emergence of, this, of the Eastern Security Network and the IPOB, and maybe also a violent perspective to the IPOB. Um, what would you also say that they must start doing now? And I'm, I'm talking of the governors of all the southeastern states, both with, regardless of what political parties they, they um, are in. Fine. I, I have to be pointed on that. Um, the governors of the southeast are not different from the governors of the north, and not different from the governors of the south, in the southwest. Now, what I mean is, these governors are called chief security officers of their states. They are just glorified chief security officers in name and not in action. Before any governor orders, the Commission of Police or the GOC of the, uh, any division under his uh, area to do anything, he must receive authorization from the presidency. So in a situation where the government cannot marshal out forces to fight any, any kind of uh, uprising or violence, it will be also unfair to well, accuse them of the, the, the relation of duty. Yeah, but so what I'm referring I, to really... What I'm referring to, an apology, what I'm referring to really is, you know, how they've been able to, or what, the role that they should have played in order to douse attention, not necessarily to send security agents against, uh, you know, them, you know, but have they, have they played their role as fathers of each state? They always call themselves the father of the state. Edugu is in the hands of God. There's different, you know, statements like that. Have they played their role well enough as fathers of each state in order to douse attention and to calm down, you know, those uh, nerves? Well, while I know that uh, the governors have been trying their best to uh, douse the situation, it's also um, worthy to say that I think they could have done more than they, they have done so far. Okay. All right. Um, hopefully, you know, we'll be able to, you know, um, you know, have another conversation. I'm not sure if you can confirm for us, uh, Chief Nian Wodo, if he will be free to join the uh, conversation anytime this week. I'll find out for you. Okay. Um, I would really appreciate it if we can speak with him directly, or maybe even the current president of Onez and Digbo. Thank you very much, uh, Emeka Tama, for your time and for speaking with us. Good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. And um, hopefully we are able to pull the uh, president general, uh, the current president general um, of Onez and Digbo, um, uh, Chief Obiozo, um, to join the breakfast um, sometime this week and have this conversation, or maybe Chief Nyan will do.
thank you very much for your time and for uh, joining us. Um, of course, if you missed out on any of it, join us on social media at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Same with our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I am Osaogi Ogmore. And I am Aneta Felix. Bye-bye.